you know, essentially told them that. And it was, it was, ended up being the best thing I could have ever done. You are listening to KC Sports Network, the number one podcast network for today's Kansas City sports fans. With former players from your favorite teams, informed perspectives, and former insiders, this is the place for you. You can find us wherever you listen to podcasts or on our YouTube channel, all over social media, or our morning newsletter, KCSN Daily, dedicated to your Kansas City Chiefs. KC Sports Network is proudly presented by Emprise Bank, your partner in possible. Uh, welcome to Booth Review, presented by Emprise Bank. You can open an account with Emprise Bank in less than five minutes. The savings just start there, though. Emprise is a trusted partner with a variety of products and services to help you achieve your goals. Don't be tethered to a brick building. Start a meaningful relationship with a bank that has your best in mind. And uh, that is Emprise Bank member FDIC. Absolutely wonderful to work with. They've been great. Make sure you check them out uh, if you're in. If you need some any any banking needs whatsoever, uh, and I'm excited today. This is gonna be a fun episode. I, I will kick it over to my dear pal Scott Chasen. Find him on Twitter at Chasen Scott. He's such a dear friend that I finally remembered his Twitter handle. Mm-hmm. Scott, what well- up? Ken, thank you for that introduction. I have another introduction to make because joining us is someone who is top five in passing yards, completions, and passing touchdowns at Kansas. He's got the most touchdowns in a season by anyone not named Todd Reesing. He has a win over Texas. He quarterbacked two 48-point games as a senior. And most notably, I am pretty sure this guy did not slide one time in his Kansas career. Carter <laughs> Stanley. Carter, thank you for joining us. And how are you feeling? Have you recovered from the beating I think you put yourself through while at Kansas? Yeah, yeah, no, thanks guys for having me. Um, no, definitely, definitely feel some of it a little bit, whether it's playing golf or even get out of a car. But no, and looking back on it, I wish I slid a little bit more. But thanks for, uh, thanks for having me, guys. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hey, I want to hear what you've been up to, but first, just because now we're on the topic, did you know how to slide? I was always pretty convinced that you, you might not have known how to slide. No, I, I didn't honestly. And, uh, <laughs> didn't know how to slide at all and playing on turf that, that mm-hmm. definitely didn't help. I just a mm-hmm. little, little bit of a fear factor there of like the cleat, maybe, you know, catching on the turf. So that definitely played a, uh, a part of it. So what do you what are you up to now? I know we heard you're down in Florida. Why don't you uh, update everyone? I know you were back at the booth. Uh, I saw you in the press box there. I think last year. Yeah, yeah. So living in uh, St. Petersburg, Florida, just moved over from Tampa. Um, working with UBS right now in wealth management and uh, liking it down here a lot. Definitely, definitely hot. You know, wish I could. I, I know Kansas isn't necessarily hotter or uh, colder in the summertime, but you know, definitely miss the seasons at times. And, uh, but no, all in all, like in my time down here. Yeah. Car, I was kind of curious, like, you know, like we're, we're sitting here and I think, you know, KU has been in camp for about two weeks now. What's the feeling like being in a, in a college, uh, college camp, you know, two weeks into two weeks into it. Yeah. It's, uh, it's crazy. You know, I, I was up there for five years and, all in all, pretty much the same situation every single time. I was fortunate enough to my my freshman year from when I first came on campus to so my fifth year, I was always in a quarterback competition. And, you know, whether that was with just one guy or heck three or four guys, it kind of varied. But you have a good feel at this point in camp, you know, right at two weeks, you definitely have a good feel. Um, probably like a week left until you really start prepping for that first opponent. And it's, it's definitely those guys right now, they kind of know where they're at, but it's not like over yet, whether you're not where you want to be or, you know, whether you're in a good spot, you still have to kind of finish it out. And um, yeah, so they they know where they're at right now. I'll say that. Mm -hmm. Hey, I I am curious about that. What what is it like being in a, a quarterback battle? Because, you know, going to camp media get to see a little bit. Now we get like, um, just like a short version at the beginning of practice. And 
we see like some some individual drills or something, but I'm certain that is not the stuff the coaches are making any kinds of decisions on. What goes into a quarterback battle? What does it look like? Can you kind of describe that? Definitely. Yeah. So I uh, kind of have this this theory. It's called the pink jersey theory. And, you know, the quarterbacks at, at KU, they wear red jerseys, meaning like they're protected, not supposed to hit them. Other schools, you know, might wear green or w- whatever color that maybe isn't associated. But it's kind of tricky because, and more so than any other position, say you're a linebacker, you're going to be able to show them what you're truly like in those 11 on 11 periods. And, you know, if you want to show them that you can tackle cover, you can do all that with quarterback. It kind of gets tricky. There's, you know, there's players that play well, knowing that they're not going to get hit and knowing that they might have that extra half a second, second to make the read and, you know, really get to maybe their third or fourth read and get it downfield. And then there's players that truly treat it like a game and it kind of makes it tricky. And, you know, most of the time it, it kind of negatively affects them. So for me personally, my first three, four years, I would just, you know, I would kind of play the practices like I would play the games and, you know, you're going through your reads and you have that internal clock going and kind of knowing you, you got to get rid of the ball. But my fifth year, I was, I was fortunate enough to kind of, you know, understand like, hey, you know, obviously, like I knew they couldn't hit me before, but you got to understand that they want to see you go through the reads, hit those throws and, you know, whether it was really going to happen or not in the game, who knows. But it's uh, it's definitely a, a different strategy that you got to uh, play into. So, do you-, uh, you know, Carter, like there's like, uh, you know, like when you're when you're in a QB battle and all this stuff, right? Like it's it's uh you're, you're still you're going against your teammates there's like that dynamic right where you know your guys are pushing yourselves to make each other better you're probably also pretty close because you're all stuck in that room together and there's a whole lot of demand with the quarterback position um speak on the i just i want to you to speak on the dynamic between battling your friends and you know trying to make yourself better simultaneously but also try to beat those guys right like right. T- talk a little bit about that dynamic yeah, that's that's certainly another whole you know component to it. There's you're with those guys all year long, and it's it's so much more than just doing all the drills together and, and watching film together. Like those are your uh, you know those are your lifting partners. You're you're running sprints together. Back in January, um, you know, in my instance, I, I actually roomed with Peyton Bender. Like I, that was my roommate for two years, which definitely you know was definitely weird at first but uh you know we we got so much closer and that's what kind of made that competition you know probably the easiest out of all of them I'd say but definitely gets weird because you're you're watching film after a long day of practice and you know whether you had a good day or bad day and same thing with your your competition whether they had a good day or bad day you're just kind of sitting there and you know you tally it up as like a win for the day or a loss for the day and you know, even in some cases you're roomed with them in the hotel that night for three weeks. And it's, it definitely gets a little weird, but you know, it's, it's part of it. Would, would there be times where you would notice something that the other guy was doing maybe wrong or could be corrected? And even early in your career, was it awkward to be like, to, to try and help people through these competitions when you're maybe facing them? And then did you ever have another quarterback kind of help you while you were competing against them? To be honest, yeah, fall camp, the boys aren't – they're not necessarily dishing out tips. Uh, <laughs> it's its definitely – you know you know what's at stake. And, what, like, let's say, you know, coach is talking to your direct competition and he'll, he'll mention something that he likes or doesn't like. You're taking a mental note to yourself. Okay, maybe, maybe try to pull that off or definitely don't try to, you know, do that move. So – it's a uh, it's a lot of mental games and you know a lot of preparation that goes into it. Do you know who's winning? Can you tell? Uh, you can tell, but it it does kind of change. You know, I'd say there were several times where, say, you're two weeks in and kind of consistently every day one guy's got a leg up on the other one, and then you know that weekend you have a eleven on eleven scrimmage the whole day, kind of simulating a game and you know, one quarterback does much better than the other. And, 
you could kind of tell with the the coaches they fully swip you know flip the switch and that next Mondays maybe the reps are divided differently so it definitely varies uh, but no usually usually you can tell so you know Carter you you spent five years at KU there was a lot of changes that happened you know throughout your time there and you know I think you know obviously like there's there's a there's probably <laughs> Weirdly, like there's been a lot of continuity for the for the Jayhawks in the last, you know, one and a half seasons to this point under Lance Leipold. But, you know, there's I think there's, you know, I, I think, you know, there's probably some things like schematically you're not able to carry and translate everything over. There's probably a lot of learning you guys had to do because you guys kept, you know, in, enduring so many changes. But there's also the veteran aspect of it by year five. Like, do you feel like how settled did you feel as a year five player heading into that last final year, despite having to deal with all the lack of kind of consistency that you had throughout your time there? Definitely. Yeah. I'd, I'd say honestly, night and day, you know, when you come in as a, a true freshman, you're 18 years old. I, I know Jalen Daniels was what, 17 and a half, like when he was playing, but uh, no, most of the time you're 18 years old and, you're trying to, you know, make every throw like it's the last throw in the, the Super Bowl. And, you know, a lot of it, it, it just a lot on you mentally. When your fifth year, you know, you kind of understand where maybe you want to spend a lot of your energy or, uh, you know, save your, save your arm. You know, you're out there for three and a half hours every day for three weeks. You, you know, you got to know when to kind of save your arm and, and maybe take it easy on the, the 10 yard check downs and whatnot. But, no, it's a it's a lot of of mental aspects and physical aspects that go into it, and as time goes on, you you definitely kind of know how to play throughout the practice. I do want to ask you specifically about the quarterback competition you were in your last year, right? Because Thomas McVitie came in, and as recent or as late as uh, as Big Twelve Media Day, you've got you know Les says, "Hey, Thomas is ahead at this point," and then when camp started, it it kind of seemed not immediate, but that like gradually it just kind of became more and more of your name getting brought up to the point where, yeah, I mean, I think you started every game for the first time and I don't even know how long at Kansas. And the only time really, I mean, a couple of times you came out later in the year, I think one time you, you handed it over to, to Manny late in the season, but um, I, I guess, are you paying attention to that stuff? Does that stuff fuel you? Do you believe that stuff? And, and how do you stay positive when, you know, your coaches out there in July being like, yeah, the, this other guy is, is probably leading the hunt. Yeah. I mean, definitely. I, uh, that first spring with coach miles there, um, you go through what I think 14 spring practices and then kind of like a spring game and, um, whole new system that I learned, like I was throughout high school and four years of college really it was kind of air raid spread with a little RPO. And then coach miles came in and it, it seemed like, more than half of it at the time was under center and play action. And there's definitely a learning curve there. And, um, you know, I myself felt like Thomas was, was playing better throughout spring and go throughout the summer workouts. It's, you know, tough to kind of truly separate yourself, you know, at that point, because no football involved, you're just lifting weights and running sprints. But, uh, no, I was luckily enough able to turn it around in that fall camp and, I noticed the main thing they wanted to see was just not turning the ball over and uh, obviously listening to coaching number one, but no, I went through a role there of, you know, I think 10, 11 practices without throwing an interception and seven on sevens and 11 on 11. And I get, I could definitely sense that I was pulling away with it, but I was actually talking with my parents about this the other day. Uh, it was funny cause I was never even told that I was the starter like mm -hmm. until I, I really don't even think game day I was even told. So <laughs> there on, you know, game one against Indiana state, I'm kind of still looking at coach like, <laughs> like so no, it's was, it was pretty funny. That was actually my first, my, my kid's first game was Indiana state. Uh, sure. believe it or not. So, uh, <laughs> did I, you stay Kent? Did you stay the whole time? Because that was kind of important. Right. Yeah, it was it was definitely closer than we wanted it to, but <laughs> I'm not I'm I'm on a KU podcast right now. I'm not allowed to say that we, right. we took the three year old home early, right? <laughs> my bad, man. It was fun though. We were having a good time. My kid was like my kid was like 
trying to keep us from leaving. He wanted to stay, but like we were like, you're going to turn into a monster in about five minutes if we don't get sure. you out of here, right? But, um, you know, Carter, like, so, you know, like the with the COVID rules and the COVID protocols, like you obviously you just missed that super senior year, right? Like you just missed that opportunity. Um, Would you have come back for a super senior year? Were you done? Would you have liked to play for Coach Leipold? Like, would you have wanted to be part of, part of that first year in the Lance Leipold era? Uh, yes to all those, um, 100%. So it was actually – it still would have been with uh, less miles in 2020. That would have been, like, my yeah. technical six year. But, um, yeah, I mean, I felt like – and obviously I was, I was training to, you know, try to get a shot in the NFL or, you know, some avenue of professional football at that point. But, you know, it was – looking at myself in, in January and in February and I was throwing the ball better than I ever have. And, you know, felt good. Finally got my weight up. Cause just for whatever reason in college, I was like always right at 200 tops and like could never get up. I ended up being like 215 and was feeling really good. And um, no, I, I absolutely would have taken advantage of that, that six year and, you know, heck to be under coach Leipold, that, that would have been pretty sweet as well. Yeah, what are your like early indication or early, you know, impressions of Coach Leipold? Do you have any of those? Or I mean, like, have you had a chance to talk to some of the guys that are still carryovers from when you were there? Um, you know, what kind of you know feedback have you kind of got about what Coach Leipold's done to this point? I mean, yeah, I I love him. You know, the the impressions I've I've had with him so far. Uh he's he reached out to me, I think, on like Twitter or something kind of shortly after he got the job and that's certainly the case with a, a lot of the other teammates that I had, like the former teammates, they said he, he reached out and um, you know, that, that means a lot as a former player, number one, but also just seeing the culture and, you know, certainly how they finished the last three games of last year because, you know, when they started off, first off, not, not having any spring ball or winter workouts to deal with, he just pretty much hopped into it right at the end of spring ball and, you know, that's, that's certainly tough to do at, at any level, let alone power five. But, uh, no, I've, I've nothing res but respect for what he's done so far. And, you know, I'm, I'm really excited about the future for them. Yeah. It's interesting. The other thing that's kind of changed since you played is also NIL. How much money would you have made especially <laughs> after Texas? I feel like after Texas, you could have, you could have cleaned up. Could have locked up a little bit after that one, maybe, but <laughs> And I, I would have, I would have had my targets. I, I would have been, I would have been maybe going for a Jefferson's deal or, mm. you know, who knows, maybe Jayhawk cafe or something, but, <laughs> <laughs> but no, it, it was, uh, that's definitely a cool thing. You know, I'm, I'm happy for those guys that, um, you know, have that opportunity. It's, it's awesome. I'm actually talking with, you know, a former player right now about maybe looking into that and, and seeing how we could help them, whether it's, you know, our, our platform of, of us kind of connecting them with some different, you know, companies and, and local uh, restaurants and whatnot. But no, it's, it's a really cool opportunity and uh, I'm happy for those guys. Uh, so Carter, I, you don't have to answer this. Like, you know, there's, there's an edit button. This isn't live. So like if we need, <laughs> we need to, you know, get rid of this, we can, but you know, you have, there's, there's some changes that happened during your tenure. There was a lot of, you know, uh, uncertainty and maybe outside looking at maybe a little bit of instability at times within within the within the organization and i guess like as a former player looking back you've you spent you got a little time farther away from the program and your time there what is something that you feel like you craved as a student athlete craved as a football player that you maybe weren't getting out of the the football experience that you were having i'm not going to ask you to speak generally about coaches necessarily but just maybe something that we you know, one of the things that maybe Coach Leipold came in to address, I guess, or one of the things that you maybe that the 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 leadership thought was missing, maybe something you can kind of echo based on that. Like, what was something you were feeling as a player? Yeah, that's. I mean, that, that's a great question. It's it's tough for me to like fully answer that just because, <clears throat> you know, at the end of the day, I I was with uh, you know Coach Beatty and his staff for for four years, and um, you know, I guess not even technically a full year under uh yeah. less but it's tough to say uh you know if, if i was in the facility today and truly seeing how they're doing it under under light and 
it, that'd be a different story, but it just kind of seems different how it's just a full blown expectation every single day. They know what they're doing. You know, they know their goals. They know what's at stake. And it just seems kind of more like a structured approach of how they're going about their business. And again, I wish I had a true answer for you right there, but <clears throat> um, no, I'm, I'm definitely happy for, for those guys and, you know, the sort of structure that they have and the trajectory they're on. Yeah. Well, one thing you didn't have um, was consistency with the guys coaching you, right? Like you had however many different head coaches, offensive coordinators, quarterbacks coach. I mean, offensive line, every position on offense, defense pretty much changed over a bunch of times. Um, when I talked, when the new staff came in, I, I talked to coach Zabrowski, the new quarterbacks coach. And I just asked like what, what he thought of that room. And he talked about how bad he felt for guys um, having to change and, and basically learn everything over and, and hear new terms and do it differently and be told to do it one way and now another way. Is that harder than people realize changing offensive coordinators and offenses as many times as you did? Yeah. Uh, you know, it, it depends on <clears throat> what I was realized, I guess, but it's, it's definitely tough um, because there, there definitely were some coaches where A to Z they're changing everything from even before you, you form the huddle, you know, they'll change how you form the huddle Um you know, the first thing you look for at the defense, like keys, what we're looking for, the terms of what we're looking for with, with the defensive players. And um, and then obviously the, the X and the O's for sure with different schemes and different plays and, and terminology for that. So, yeah, it's, it's definitely harder than, you know, the average person would think. But uh, I was fortunate enough to not have like any drastic changes mid-season at least you know, some of the ones where it was completely different, you're learning that in, in January and you got until September to, you know, fully learn it. But um, yeah, it's, it can definitely be tough at times. Can you name all your OCs? I'll try. Yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> it was Rob Likens. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> and then sophomore year it was a mix between Beatty and, and Garrett Riley. Mm -hmm. And then, my well, that was my red shirt freshman year. Red shirt sophomore year, it was Meacham. Uh, red shirt junior year, it was Meacham, and then kind of Beatty and Love, mm -hmm. Love, and then uh, senior year, it was Les Kenning and Brent Deerman. You missed one. You absolutely missed one, Carter. It's, you know, I'll, I'll give you a hint. It was a Les Miles offensive coordinator. <sighs> He was there for 20 days. Oh, Chip Lindsay. Yep. <laughs> yep. Chip Lindsay. It's, it's funny you mentioned that. I, I actually, uh, I've, I've somewhat stayed in touch with him. And obviously I, I met with him literally one time for 20 minutes <laughs> before going off to like winter break. But no, he was, he was a super good guy. I was really excited to have him. It was unfortunate it didn't work out, but um, I was in Boone, North Carolina, where Appalachian State is, and he was the head coach of Troy. And I saw Troy was coming into town, and I was actually like planning on going to the game. It was Thanksgiving of 2020, I think, and um, I just like texted the number I had from like 12 or 13 months prior, and sure enough, uh, it was the same number, and just kind of wish wished him luck and. Told him I was going to be there and, and hope to see him before the game. But no, it was, uh, it was funny. So, Carter, what's your relationship with the game of football like these days? Like, are you staying engaged at all? Are you, I mean, what's what's your kind of relationship to football these days? Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm still fully locked in for sure. I uh, think about it all the time. It's, uh, you know, it's awesome. I'll, I'll follow, I'll follow like sophomore in high school recruits on Twitter just to see, you know, what, what we're looking at in the future. And, uh, no, I, I definitely love it. I, uh, I tune in as much as I can and specifically KU football for sure. But to be honest with you, I, I think I'm kind of more in it from like a, a fan. I mean, definitely more so a fan side now, but, um, yeah. Cause like when I was a player, you get done with all the meetings and the practices and you go home and, you just want to hang out, like watch TV or play Fortnite or whatever back in the day. But uh, no, I, I definitely tune into the guys. 
I, one other follow up to that is like how much I, I I played back in the day, same position, work quarterbacks. You were a lot better than I was. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but how do you feel like just the game kind of open like? watching the game of football has changed for you starting like if you go back and look at senior in high school carter now you watch the game as 24 year old i'm assuming you're 24 25 carter stanley how much more enjoyable and different is it just organically being able to watch that game yeah no it's it's totally different i'm still uh <laughs> I'm still like looking at where the nickel is uh -huh. and at the front and whatnot. And, you know, it's funny, I'll, I'll be watching say like NFL football with my girlfriend on a Sunday and I'm like pointing at the screen, like <laughs> trying to call like who's going to be open. And <laughs> she's just like laughing, but no, it's, he's it's blitzing. Yeah, blitzing. I can tell he's blitz. He's capped. He's going. Right. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's definitely more analytical and uh, it's, it's funny because when you're in a, a room with just like some friends and, you got to kind of tone it down a little bit, but no, it's uh, definitely different. Well, Hey, you watch Kansas. Like you mentioned, you saw how much Jalen Daniels grew from his first year, which obviously, I mean, tough situation. He's young. The line is being totally rebuilt. The offense is being right. rebuilt. There's no mm -hmm. spring to where he was at the end of last year. I guess what impresses you about him and, and what do you see when you watch him that, that makes him such an effective quarterback now? Yeah. Um, you know, I think it's, I think it's a combination of two things, like obviously experience, you know, he was thrown out there as a 17 year old puppy. And like you said, it was that O-line, it won't, won't go down as, as the best O-line in college football history that he was dealing with at the time. And, um, you know, you could just tell he was young and, and maybe forcing things, but this year, especially at the end when, you know, when he really started to play again, it was, uh, it looked a lot, looked a lot better. It was just going through his reads, looked way more comfortable. And, you know, I'm, I'm really excited with how he's playing. You know, I think he, he killed it those last three games playing really efficient football. And, you know, again, it's tough to tell if that just experience, I'd, I'd say probably more, more so coaching. Um, and, you know, especially at the end of the year, but yeah, they, he's looking really good. what do you think he had a decision to make with his red shirt? Um, playing the last two games where, you know, for him, it's like, do I burn a year or not? And he has no idea how good he's going to play. But the, the other side of that is I always wondered, could he even like turn down the opportunity to play? Like would teammates respect him the same way if you're, you're kind of need this guy to come in and lead your offense? And he's like, well, hold on. Um, so I, I was curious, did you right. think that was much of a decision? Um, and what did you think of his decision to kind of burn that red shirt and just say he was going to go for it? Yeah, definitely. So what it's, it's four games where, you know, if you just like play one snap in any of those four. So I guess what it was K state, Texas, and then TCU and West Virginia were the, or, okay. Huh. But yeah, I think, uh, I think he definitely made the right decision, you know, especially after coming off of the Texas win, it's, it'd be almost like impossible for him to say, yeah, I got us one, but I, you know, I got a, a career ahead of me and, you know, I'm going to save this year. It's, he definitely made the right decision because that's, that's something that would affect the locker room for sure. And, you know, that might play a, a role in his career for the rest of his, his time there. Um, I'm jealous of those guys because, you know, my freshman, I think 2015 through 2016 or 2017, it was like, if you play one down or if you like record a stat, like that's your red shirt. So I was actually, it was the one away game I went to as a redshirt freshman or like a, a true freshman being redshirted in 2015. We were at Texas, uh, you know, we were 0 and 8 and a half at that point. It was, <laughs> we were down 24, 17 and it was definitely a good game. Good first half of the time. And um, I think Ryan Willis, like kind of maybe tweaked his groin or something. He was a little bit banged up and, Beatty uh, kind of dragged me off to the side and asked me, he was like, Hey, what do you think? I, I think we got him. Like, you know, quarterback run looks good. Um, we're in this game for sure. And back then it was, you know, you play one, one snap and you're done. I'm thinking about it. I'm like, man, I haven't ran with the ones and twos since middle of August. Like I've been running around on scout team, just like chucking bombs, having fun. Like, 
there's no way I'm ready to go into this second half against Texas and like, you know, just burn the red shirt. And I just, you know, essentially told them that. And it was, it was, ended up being the best thing I could have ever done. Cause then I had my fifth year available, but yeah, it's a, it's a tough decision when, when it comes down to it for sure. Carter, we'll get you out of here uh, in a couple of minutes. I think Scott had some true or false questions he wanted to ask you real quick before we got here, though. Yeah, I, I've got I, I made a little bit of a list of just things I wanted to run down. True or false. You can elaborate as much or as little as you want. Um, first one I got for you. True or false. Less miles winking at you. One, that that really happened. And two, that that played a part in you returning to Kansas. A hundred percent. So I, I, I wouldn't say. I wouldn't say because there was some things that went on uh, between that introductory like kind of press conference or like team meeting and um, really thinking about maybe transferring in the spring. But uh, no, he comes in and he's wearing the sweet suit, wearing his LSU huge <laughs> national championship ring, his, his fingers crooked, just like weighed down. He's a real short and simple with us, like cool. And I'm sitting like in the front row. Um, pretty much right away from his podium. He like grabs his kind of papers and looks down and does like a, a head nod or like a wink or something. I was like, let's go, man. <laughs> I, was, I was like really blushing. I was like, gee. <laughs> oh, that's great. Ken, did you ever have a coach uh, wink at you? No, I, I was, no, I was too busy like having to keep, you know, notes for the starter. Right. <laughs> there. So. All right. Second one here. Steven Sims is the toughest wide receiver you played with at KU. True or false? Yeah. 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 I'd say, I'd say the toughest. He's, he's awesome, man. Uh, so I don't know if you guys saw, but this past weekend, he had a pretty good game, had a nice reverse, nice punt return. And, no, Steven's the man. He was he would fight through a lot, you know, whether it was like a little ankle injury, you know, some hamstrings and obviously as a receiver, that's that's your livelihood having your legs, but you know, also, you know, a little bit of drama maybe here and there with the coaching staff that was maybe not warranted just because of like the expectations of the player he could be. And um, yeah, no, Steven, Steven I would say is the toughest. My introduction. Uh, to Steven Sims, or maybe not introduction, but the moment I always remember was after the Texas game where one, he, you know, ripped that ball away to keep it from being an interception to help you guys yeah. get to overtime, which was huge. But after the game, I mean, he cut a, a wrestling WWE level promo on Carter Stanley and how tough you were and how uh, the players really liked that you would lower your shoulder and, and go at guys and that you really uh, galvanized them. So I always wondered what it was like, because you had that connection. It seemed like with Dalen your last year, you really trusted him. Um, I, I always wondered what it was like to just have that kind of, you know, be on the same page and how long it takes to build it, you know, that connection with the guy. Definitely. Yeah. Is, is, is that a process? Does that take time? Yeah, hundred percent. I'd say, um, and that's what was kind of tough with, uh, incredible player, really talented, Andrew Parchment, my fifth year. He came in and, you know, we knew he was going to be a good ball player. Saw that very early on. And, um, you know, it was really tough to get a chemistry with him. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to lie. He, he was kind of a freelancer. Like uh, speaking of that Indiana State game earlier, I remember it was like the third quarter or something. And we were in one of those heavy sets with, you know, two tight ends, a, a fullback and a running back or something. And he was the lone receiver out wide and we break the huddle and he was supposed to have like a, uh, a go route, but he was just like saying, Hey, uh, you know, I'm going to think about a comeback. And I'm just like, think about it. I'm like, Oh man. And it's funny. If you actually look back, that was the play where I threw it behind him. It was mm -hmm. a defensive back. AP ends up catching it luckily, but Mm -hmm. Yeah, it uh, it definitely takes time. Where things like that, where if Steve, like we wouldn't even really have to talk about it, you know, we'd kind of like leave the huddle and kind of give a head nod or something, and it'd be something that we talked about two or three years prior or something, and you know, you, you get a good feel for guys like that after time. Last two, uh, number one, true or false? Ku players were watching Miles to go every week. 
True, for sure. <laughs> true. Oh, man. Any yeah. takeaways? Did you learn things about your coaches from that series? Uh, not so much about the coaches. You know, I, I think whether this was, like, intentional or not, they – they wouldn't necessarily talk about like the players or like get too deep into the, uh, the meeting rooms or whatever. But um, it was funny. I think it was right before the Texas game in 2019, um, we'd had an up and down year so far. It was, you know, some good performances, some bad performances. And the uh, ESPN crew wanted to come over to my house and I was living with uh, Hudson Hall, the fullback and, two baseball players at the time and they were like yeah we just want to stop by and, and see what a, a typical Thursday night looks like for you guys and it was funny because it it was not necessarily typical you know we, we spiced it up a little bit for them made it made it seem a little bit more fun than what it usually is but um we're out there playing cornhole at like 10 o'clock at night and, and they're <laughs> recording that and you know they leave and I kind of look at my roommate Hudson I'm like man, we better play well on, or on Saturday. <laughs> that'd, be, that'd be a bad look. And, you know, sure enough, it was, it was a good game. Ended up losing last second. But, uh, no, the miles to go is great. We we definitely tuned in. Mm-hmm. Texas got a few extra seconds on that last drive. We can say yeah. that. <laughs> um, all right, last one here. I had never heard of this restaurant, Ken. I don't know if you have. Um, and I lived in Lawrence for a while. I know I know now it's it's pretty popular now, but Les Miles would tell recruits the Big Mill was the best restaurant in Lawrence, bar none. And I am curious, true or false, that is true. The, be- the Big Mill is the best restaurant in Lawrence. To be, I don't even know if I've heard of that, to be honest mm-hmm. with you. Where, uh, do you know, you know where that is or like what it is? I honestly have no idea that I was curious if he was like bringing the team there, making it a thing with you guys. Did he mean pizza shuttle? I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) Was it, did you say the big nil or the big mill? Big mill. M I L L. Yeah. I mean, one, I've, I haven't heard of that place and no, he, he didn't try to push that on us by any means. (laughs) Yeah. Well, one, I just killed any chance. Sorry, Kent, uh, of them ever sponsoring the show. Um, (laughs) Well, you want to know who one of our sponsors is? Is Charlie Hustle, and we're rocking yeah. some shirts of them right now. So shout out Charlie Absolutely. Hustle for the for the for the swag. Love it. We got yeah. that plug in just under the wire, and I I did have one other question. This one's impossible though. You're not you're not going to be able to get all these. So you threw a touchdown pass to 17 teammates in your career. I actually listed them all out, and and, and it's it's a pretty extensive list that includes Earl Bostic, uh, Michael Zunica, uh, which I do not remember at all. Um, it, it's a pretty good list of names. Do you have a, a, a favorite that's not like a typical one? Do you have like a favorite weird touchdown pass or, or something that was special or different um, that happened into a game? I think you had a fullback touchdown, like one to Spencer Rowe in a game your senior year. Yeah, no, definitely. That's that's funny you say that. That would be tough for me to try to mention. You said 17 different players. Yeah. That would definitely be tough to name all those. But, I mean, heck, the one to – Zunica, his senior year was great because it was his last college football or, you know, last football game ever. It was um, play action, kind of flat route against K-State in the fourth quarter and felt good, number one, because it was his last game. But then I also kind of missed him on like a trick play that we ran against Mm -hmm. Iowa State two weeks before, I think. And it was one of those things where he was so wide open and I just kind of lobbed it in between like the wind blowing and not putting enough juice on it, ended up getting deflected. But that one definitely felt good. And, um, you know, I'd say I'd say the one to Spencer Rowe as well against mm-hmm. Iowa State my, my senior year. Um, same type of deal, close to the goal line, play action, and he was kind of wide open. And, and those guys don't necessarily get the ball a lot or, or get all the glory. So, no, that was that was cool. He said he had never caught one uh, on that play in practice before until yeah. he threw it to him. That's oh, what he no, said, and that's no, what he, he said at the yeah, time. Yeah, no, he, he – I think he barely even got reps at that play in practice, so it was almost like a surprise when I, I rolled out and saw him. I was like, oh, <laughs> kind of check it up. It looks, that's funny. I'm seeing Earl Bostic on here uh, mm-hmm. as one of the guys you threw a touchdown to. That's pretty amazing. I mean, that's a that's a holdover. I mean, this is his, 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 his super senior year uh you know i that's that's crazy man that's crazy that's you you've had a you had a great career man it was so much fun watching you play 
And it was, I mean, you, I, your growth as a player throughout your entire time at Kansas was wildly impression, impressive. I wish we would have gotten another year uh, of, of, of the Carter Stanley era because that was a very fun, uh, enjoyable time, especially, I mean, I, I thought you had it. I thought you had a great, uh, great year to close it out, man. I, I really appreciate it. I had, had a blast doing it. You know, it was awesome. Definitely some ups and downs, but it was everything I could have dreamed of coming out from, uh, you know, Vero Beach, Florida, small town and not knowing at all what to uh, experience as far as just, you know, KU as a whole, but then also just the the success of uh, the playing career. It was, it was awesome to go out there and, and have a good time. Well, that was Carter Stanley. That's also Scott Chasen, and this is Booth Review. Thank you guys so much for listening. Thanks again to Carter uh, for hanging out with us a little bit here. We'll catch you later.